Fox created. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. There's a lot of like guys and girls out there who do like to mess around with alcohol and other things, and you know, it's up to them if they want to do that. But me personally, it was when I hit 30, um, it got to a point where I thought, you know what, I'm going to make an effort now because I'm starting to get older. And uh, mm. I actually was starting to get put weight on. Mm. You know, when I was about 30, you know, I look at old videos and I think, nah, you know what, oh, i got to make an effort now. Mm. You know. 30s are a weird one because, um, and big shout out to the youngers out there watching, to, yeah. to take yeah. heed. Um, <laughs> it's It's like, you have this there's this fork in the road where it's like you've got some lifestyle decisions to make or or the the opposite and then right in between there is that kind of de- depressive space where you're hitting that middle age and you're saying to yourself uh am i you know i don't want to get depressed over anything i just got to figure this shit out life changing things happen things move real quick don't they yeah 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 fully you know it was like a big, i suppose mine was the start when i had you know when i had my son Mm. I was like 26 and um, it was that point in life where I was like, uh, right, you know what, I've got to stop fucking around now, mm. you know, I've got to just, um, you know, be a good role model, mm. you know, and um, doing right so far, you know, he plays football mm. and um, he's doing good at it. He's currently got a broken ankle though. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, no. He's all right, he's recovering How well, he? you know, he's 11. Yeah, big up. I see it. We'll, we'll get your name, but big up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 11 years old, man. Does he watch you, like, in music videos and all that? It must be like... Um, yeah, little bits, man. You know, um, again, you know, it definitely changed my subject matter a bit more yeah. with, with, with him getting older because, like I said, I want to be a good role model, you know? So, um, you know, mm. it's like Wu-Tang saying it, you know what I mean? In a better tomorrow, you know? The seeds grow up the same way, like, and yeah, uh, they do, yeah. So, you know, you got to just be a good example, and um, or at least I have anyway. I'm not speaking for nobody else, but like, uh, mm. you know, that's kind of how I feel about it, yeah. With the with the new new um project, Chaos Black, uh, again, this is like the second of, of a of a uh, of a duo that have been put out by you guys, IMS Hold Tight, yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I feel like this particular outing, in every great way, there's a lot of commercial opportunity there. Okay. And I feel like you've created this journey that more often than not, people in their press releases try and manipulate the truth and reimagine the history timelines that they did something tangible you did something so incredibly tangible and now transferring that onto record and doing it away in a way that not only holds um lyrical integrity but also has these other elements that make it quite you know uh, appealing to the to a wider audience you know what i mean yeah, this is yeah. this is a, a really quite in my opinion quite a landmark um transition yeah i mean um like it was created during the um well not created but it was written during the first lockdown yeah. so i had plenty of time and um relaxation and i've always said to people that's when i come out with my best stuff you know when i feel like i've got no pressure on me mm. and i'm relaxed and um i'm in a comfort zone mm. Even though I can produce outside of a comfort zone but it's different it's more like a battle setting for that with mm. this I felt like, right, you know, time ain't a factor. You know, I, I can just sit down in my zone and come up with something. And I, I did the whole project in that first lockdown. Talk to me about that that sweet spot of a zone. Studio at home? I mean, I've got a little setup. Yeah? Yeah. Do you record there as well? Yeah. And then transfer it over to the guys? Yeah. Where are the guys based? Um, What, IMS? Yeah. Oh, one of them is in um Ben eighty one. He's in Manchester, and uh, Neil Cage is in Bristol. But they're both from London. Yeah, that just blew my fucking mind. <laughs> so you guys are like, this is like the Bermuda Triangle of like fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like this is like fucking Power Rangers, Voltron, in all the locations of of England. That's okay. So 
how does that play out then? Because now I get it from a sonic point of view. It's there is a there is a thread that goes throughout the songs, and I love the skits as well. The skits are banging, just like just the beats alone and like fucking. On Chaos Black, yeah, yeah come yeah, on, yeah, fucking yeah. heavy. Um, but in terms of flushing out ideas, how many songs do you have to create to then whittle down the ones that you ended up having on the, on the EP? I think there was only one or two songs that didn't make the cut for this one. Really? Um, yeah. I'm always a little disappointed because, like, um, I just love everything to get out there. But yeah. I understand not everything's going to, you know. But, um, yeah, there's only one or two songs. Hopefully we'll see them again. Mm. Well, we'll see them in future, you know. I'll see them again. And, uh, yeah. It was pretty simple with this one. It was actually a little bit more difficult with the first pro project. Yeah, I can imagine, because you're still kind of finding your feet a lot. Yeah, yeah. There and was the geographics that... of it was quite a lot. It was, you know, there's a big distance between you guys, you know what I mean? I know, but I guess with the internet and um, everything, you know, it's it's not so difficult now. You can just transfer everything yeah. through um, We Transfer or, 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 or Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chaos Black for me, it feels like such a well refined project if you guys have to check it out by the time this comes out you will be able to check it out um it, it, it's so well refined um it's that kind of dare i say it is x uh, it is um uh radio x it is six music it is uh the more radio two alternative it really hits the alternative marker. Yeah. So when you say the producers are from Bristol, Manchester, it's like, yeah, that's fucking fuego because it's almost <laughs> like that's on the money right there, right? Yeah, no, I feel that. Um, yeah, I mean, Ill Move Sporadic seem to have their own their, their own thing going on as far as the sounds that they produce. Um, the, the couple of the tracks off of the first vinyl that we did actually did get on Six Music. Really? Yeah. So um, it's, it it's funny you should say that, and um, so far um, we're looking to get this on there too. So uh, stay tuned. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, you had a lot of support from the likes of Don Letts and and these kind of DJs on the right. Don Letts only lives around the corner, by the way. You know. He's oh really? Just kinda, yeah, man. It's <laughs> one of the Dons. One of the Dons. But you know what it is? It's when you get those kind of people with a level of integrity that have heard a lot of stuff and they know what they're talking about. When you get that, it's like, oh, it's one hell of an okay sign, isn't it? No, it is. It is. Everybody's pulling in that same direction, you know, like-minded individuals. And, uh, yeah, man, it's kind of what you need. No no time getting wasted, you know? Yeah, I feel like for all of the acclaim, this as a venture isn't too dissimilar because everyone knows your voice. But I would imagine Don Let's, for one second, has been on, like, don't flop. <laughs> <laughs> seen seen a battle going down. Like, that must feel really fucking good to know that it gets that critical acclaim yeah. without the kudos of something that is is almost like a, a, a mini life in itself. Yeah, nah, totally. You know, um you know, I got bigged up before, like the Panic Room project by um what's it, Gideon Cole yeah. and um you know, Lauren Laverne. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, anybody who can get behind the project and, and show it love, you know, we're, we're, we're mad appreciative, you know, because we love making music and, um, yeah, we ain't going to stop here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do, you, do you ever feel, I mean, you, you mentioned this just before coming on and um, reasonably limited for the expose of, of the genre as a whole. Is that something that has been a challenge to you and the guys or is it a case that well the album the project is is diverse enough it, it, it holds enough commercial gravitas and it's, it's just about pacing yourself and getting it into the getting yourselves into the right position as the release comes out is that the kind of plan that you've got for it yeah pretty much um you know there's always going to be people out there that appreciate it and um it's just be, you know becoming visible mm. to them you know hence why i was saying earlier like with the whole battle thing um as much as i enjoyed it i'm not sure if at the time it was the right path to take but i don't mind because at the end of the day it's emceeing 
So people who like that will know me for that. But as far as making music, it's a whole different thing. And um, yeah, with this, you know, I feel like it's an endurance game. Mm. Yeah, it's an endurance game. You know, there are people out there that like what we do, but we we, we need to just keep going, you know, maybe yeah. create some kind of cult following. Funny you say that, because my next, my next conversation was, yo, if you had, you know, IMS is the sound system and you as the, the, the front of it, yeah. then what's to say the new culture of not necessarily battle rap, but sound clash yeah. is you actually have the competitive values of the DJ sound system clashing from back in the day, but with the battle rappers. So you're actually going... Because I know, obviously, there's the versus um, programs and shit. Yeah, yeah, but to be yeah. honest, it's just them doing, you know, it's just them doing songs. live versions. Yeah, it's the songs. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you've really got, like... And this could also transform to record, do you know what I mean? Like, this, this idea of, like, crews, like battle rappers actually having their own sound system. That shit would be fucking bonkers. You know what? But when you, when you say that, like... What do you mean, like battling each other back and forth? No, just like, it could be like 20 minutes of like non-stop fucking battle MCing combined with DJs doing their thing within a, within a, uh, a, um, a, what's it called? A, a, a unit. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And 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 it goes back to the kind of reggae sound clashes. It goes back to the, the Red Bull sound clashes. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. just, you've got the integrity of like a, a badass MC that can run a battle if he wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this this is the thing as well. Um, it comes down to how good you are over rhythm. Yeah. And um, look, funnily enough, there's a lot of battle rappers who that ain't really their thing. Really? Honest to God. Without having a beat, they'll just rather just... A cappella. Ac- you yeah. know, and this this is the thing. Um, I, I guess that's where the divide comes, you know, like um, a lot of the fans who are into battling, you know... They don't expect to hear a beat, yeah. you know. And that's that goes to show that you know the 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 culture of battling has changed. Because when I first got into it, there was always a beat. Yeah. You know, it weren't till around oh five where I started hearing these a cappella battles, which I liked, by the way. Mm. But um, you know, it kind of created a new lane, and and the fans who got behind that lane, um, they don't really want to hear no you know, beat in the background. Really? That's fucking mongers. Yeah. Is that the, and that's the culture? Yeah. yeah. But this must must give you a home field advantage that you can rhyme on bars, on beats. You can, and you grew up on yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. level of discipline. A hundred percent. I'm proud to be that sort of, you know, battle MC who can do both. And, uh Yeah. You know, there's footage out there that's proved it. So um, I'm I'm comfortable in that, like, you know. What does, what does, the, you said battle MC there, I'm a battle MC. Yeah. What, what's that, what does that do to you? What, 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 what does that mean to you? What, to be a battle MC? Yeah. What's uh, it, what's it, what, what defines you as the battle MC? What define what, uh, define what it is for you? Being able to go head to head with another MC if they challenge you. Because that was always what it was for me. The reason I got into it was um, I'd already moved to Portsmouth at this time. And, um, you know, I was, I'd been doing it for a little while, you know, from the days in London. Mm. And, um, the, you know, it was, it was what, teen, teenagers, like uh, mid to late teenagers, right? And, um, you know, other guys who were that age, same age, were like rappers too, like, and there was always that competitive element of, okay, well, um, if they ask me for a battle, I better be able to defend myself, mm. you know, because back then there was always that element of, uh, well, I don't know, it might still be out there, but um, everyone always wanted to be the best in there mm. and, or, or, or near that level. Mm. And um, so I always made sure I had a little something ready, you know, me and my friends who I rapped with, who who were never gonna battle each other unless it was for jokes, um, you know. We always made sure we were ready for some like stranger step up and try and battle us, and mm. y- that's kind of what brought it. You know, it's funny how that that the fact that you're there battle rapping, and then 
all of a sudden you're in that arena and all of a sudden everyone's a battle rapper. Yeah, I know. And that, isn't it weird that, this, that it's almost like below the radar there's this underground network of MCs that yeah, the moment yeah. you say in your mind, yeah, I'm a battle rapper now, it's like, oh, yeah, are you? Oh, right, yeah, yeah well, I'm a battle yeah, rapper, do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, have you lived it sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or did you just watch it and want to be down or... or yeah. I mean, there's many ways you can get involved, I guess, but... um. You know, it takes a lot of fucking work. Right, you better get ready to get beat. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've got to lose to 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 really gain long term win, haven't you? Well, this is the thing. Um, in oh nine, you know, I took part in battle scars, and um, Heavy. you know, like um, that was before don't flop, mm. and um, you know, I didn't win it. I got to the semi final, but I didn't win. But instead of being mad about it, I I, I was just pleased with how I'd performed. And I felt like I could have won it, mm. but it just weren't my time. Mm. And um, oops, sorry, mm. the microphone. Um, yeah, I just felt it weren't my time. And um, after that, you know, I went on to do big things. Like so, um, I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, mm. in terms of, you know, you got to lose before you win. And uh, that's it, man. Kind of goes back to what I was saying. If it, if somebody's new to it, and um, they flop. Just take it as a learning curve. Take the hit. It's, yeah. It's what it is. You live to see another day. You know, you fell your way to success. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, really the truth, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Tenshi, you, your demeanour, it, it, it reminds me of an athlete. It's, it's very direct to the answers, the, to questions being, answer, uh, being answered by yourself. Yeah. You've got very... You're very calculative in how you express and explain things. Yeah. Is this is this is this an attitude that you had to develop, or is this just part of your aesthetic? Nah, it's, it's who I am. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, I don't know, man. I just selective with every answer I give. I guess you know, like uh, I like to give the best answer I can give when when somebody's talking to me. I always think things through. You know, I'm. Um, I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, just the way I am, bro. Like, mm. uh, yeah, I'm a Pisces, man. You know mm. what I mean? It's uh... you listen as well. You're a great listener. Um, it's a complete juxtaposition when you're um, listening to your lyrics on record <laughs> and the vocabulary, the extent, the depth that you're spitting. It's, it's not like for a minute we're, we're expecting a you know thesaurus and a dictionary in your pocket when we yeah, meet you, but yeah. it's almost like, it's, you know what it's like. You know rugby players before they go on the pitch they're wearing a suit. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when it's time to, to to do their thing, they're wearing the rugby the kit. Kit. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like that, bro. What like uh, with me? As it's like yeah. It's like you ain't you ain't you got what you need to say when you want to say it. But when you hear yourself on record or when you're in the octagon, it's like, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I get that. I've got like, a whole different demeanor on stage yeah. uh, or on record. But off of it, I'm generally quite reserved. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm not the most hype guy. You know, that's the thing. I, I'm, like you say, calculative. Mm. You know, and. Uh, Patient. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, I've always n known that things ain't going to come to you immediately. But if you play the long game, you'll get what you what you want. Yeah. What's your long game? Or is that a, a private conversation that you have in your head? Not necessarily private. It's more to do with the fact that I guess predicting the future is not always easy. But if you do play the long game in whatever you do, eventually you, people won't be able to ignore you. Mm. No matter what, like, you know, and your level will show. You just have to have that faith that you're good at it, mm. which um, I ain't, I ain't too fussed about because I I know I'm pretty good. So like, uh, yeah, you're tough, bro. Like, <laughs> come on, this is fucking killer kind of podcast. We're gonna deal with yeah. dogs in this place. Come on, you know, like uh, you, you you do it for long enough, then you're gonna get into that level mm. where um, you you you're, you're better than the average person. So. Mm. And that becomes undeniable. People can't escape yeah. from that tsunami of, you know what I mean? Nah, fully, 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 fully. I am, um, I have a, a lot of people that come on here 
Um, and people that I frequent, people that you meet, and I think there's a lot of attention that they give for the things that don't need the attention of, in yeah. some cases. I, I feel like what you're giving there is sage advice because you don't have to make a lot of noise other than the creative output that you're competent at doing and almost amplify that and then it becomes success it's, it's undeniable yeah that's crazy no nah, no nah, i feel that i feel that you know you just have to um get involved you know with what you're doing and um yeah you know just get in the zone if you get were if, if you were to be told that there's a, a rap league starting next month yeah. and tenchu in 2022 onwards was to have that opportunity again to jump in the ring and like you said you've you've been offered battles out but you know the money's on the table we're back in business game on would you a do it and b approach it with the same mindset or a different one um well to tell you the truth i mean the only thing honestly which is really going to get me back battling again i believe is the right opponent mm. um e e even money is like uh i mean they're gonna have to offer a lot because mm. um you're a celebrity in that shit you know what i mean it's like you, you know what i mean it's true i mean yeah, no, i feel that i feel that like in, in, you're in trusted you're you're a good you know yeah yeah no i'm up there mm. but like um in terms of doing it again i don't i don't really I ain't really i'm not into it really mm. now you know even when i did the last battle it was against copyright a huge battle um maybe something like that you know because you know i was growing up listening to copyright and um it was a big moment mm. you know it was a huge moment but in terms of you know being in a ring with another battle rapper it's not really you know i'm not trying to like put myself on a level above anybody but it's more like uh, at this point, I, I, I'm just trying to do what's better for me, mm. you know. And um, it's a lot of energy that. Yeah, and it's like I'm just thinking about my CV now, mm. you know, my C, my my rap CV. Yeah, and like uh, that's kind of where I'm at with battling, you know. In terms mm. of if the, if another league come about, then I mean, you know, they've they've offered before, but two things really you're gonna have to offer a ton of money and you're gonna have or you're gonna have to offer an opponent which i think does my cv real good you know i think would be a really good look if you know these these battle organizations came together collectively in the same way like record labels do and create you know award ceremonies for some of these contributions that you battle rappers are really brought to the take you know i'd argue that you know you know you know, shot your horror. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's he's another amazing like artist. It's yeah, just, man. Fuck, like, you know, and he's doing his thing too now, obviously. But there's you know, there's some fucking lifetime achievement award for battle rap in there, man. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you reckon there should be like an a, an award ceremony or something? I think when people like, for instance, drum and bass knowledge awards. Yeah. It's like. The you know there's lifetime achievements there's best MCs there's best producers there's best mm -hmm. D DJs and although okay it could seem a little bit two dimensional and a, a bit kind of passe for people that are into like I don't know the soap awards or some shit with star spangles extravagandas it's more about it's more about um, a, a united unanimous scene that says no you fucking and and that makes you want you want to do it. Makes you feel proud that you know that's where on your catalogue you have a lifetime achievement yep, award from. Yep, do you know what I'm yep, saying? Yep, yep, yep. Something you can hang on your wall or on your shelf or yeah, like it's yeah, yeah, part of your CV. Yeah, I feel that because that's what you're talking about. Essentially, you want a catalogue that people can say, "Wow, you won that." Yeah, you well, that. I think like I do have the jump off trophy, which I'm really proud of. Oh, you know, fantastic. I, I, yeah. I got that in 2012, yeah. mm -hmm. and um. It's like some big trophy, man. It's like a, yeah. it's a thing that I show people. It's still on my 
cabinet now. We love that shit. Yeah. Come on. And, you know, people talk about battling, come to my yard, I just be like, yeah, this is my battle trophy right here. There's a couple of others as well, come like on, smaller man. ones, but like that one right there is like the... Uh, yeah. yeah. It's the holy, the holy <laughs> grail. Yeah, like, man. You can imagine it though, like the BAFTA of, the equivocal of that it was just like all the, un, all of these battle leagues just come together and say, yeah, this, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Huge yeah. gravitas to that. You know? Yeah, yeah, I feel that, I feel that. You know, if they uh, come together, then that's cool. Like, you know, more time they're competing with each other, but like, uh, yeah, it's all good. It's the nature of the game, I guess. Mm, it is but, the nature um, of the game. To, to, the, to the core. Yeah, They're battling yeah. in the leagues. The leagues are battling with each other. Yeah. Everyone's battling with each other. Yep, 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 yep. Everybody want that one, number one spot, you know. But mm. uh, you know, ideally, they could link up, like. But mm. yeah. Mm. Well, on that note, it's been a pleasure linking up with you, my brother. Nah, That's nah, nah, nah. Definitely, fantastic. definitely, definitely, man. It's been great, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, actually, kind of flew by, like yeah. this, 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 this podcast, man. But I'm glad you could have me here, bro. Yeah. And um, you know, what I mean, it's a pleasure. We keep it nice and smooth here. Time flies when you're having a good chat over on a podcast. And uh, the name of the EP, the new one. Say it loud. Chaos Black. You know, myself, Tenshu, Ill Move, Sporadic on production. You know, got a feature in there from Jason Williamson from Sleaford Mods. My guy. Yeah. Shout out them. Um, yeah, man. Shout out everyone supporting. You know, big up Killer Keller right here. Um, all my peeps, you know, like DMB Brummy, Ricardo Lacombe, um, you know, Phil Tang. You know, list goes on, man. You know, shout out all of you. You know, Chaos Black, go get that. It's on digital, it's mm. on vinyl. You know, every music platform, look out for it, man. This is this is some mad shit right here. For real, and it ain't easy to be putting on top of all of that. The, 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 the amount of cost it takes to press, them limited drops, they, they're limited for a reason. Go get it, go get it, make it happen. Thank you, thank you so much, my brother. No, no, thank you once we're again, here, brother. Yeah, you know I mean, Killer Keller podcast out like it was out of fashion to tell me we don't deal with the mixed and martial arts of street culture. This is what we're doing here. Yeah, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. We are like it was out of fashion, people. You stay lucky. Look after yourselves. Peace. Yeah. It's good stuff, bro. Yeah, it's good stuff.